Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Garden at Al Karid. This, in this week of release video, I'll give you a guide to everything you need to know about the new skilling opportunities and rewards in the garden, as well as everything you need to know about the overhaul to herb and herb seed drops. That's a big one, and just my first impressions in general. I also have a walkthrough of the Civil War Part Three mini quest that has to do with the garden, which you can complete for the Tier Five reward of the Infernal Puzzle Box um, at the end of this video. Uh, that reward will grant you faster backriminal bolt fletching and safety from the random wilderness events while you're standing near a bloodwood tree, which might be of interest to a lot of you. First things first, this video is timestamped, so if you're interested in a particular aspect of the update, uh, feel free to jump around. Second, I do have a video released just prior to this one also around the Curried Garden, but that one is not a guide for this update. Uh, it's more a reflection and my thoughts on the direction RuneScape is headed in with updates like this, and the kind of updates that RuneScape will need, in my opinion, if it wants to survive in the modern games market in the long run. If this topic interests you, I highly encourage you to check out that video as well, and maybe have a discussion in the comments. But if you're sticking around, let's get started with the garden. You can find this new garden, first of all, and its druids to the north of al Karid and to the northwest-ish of Hetz Oasis. At a high level, the big skiller things to do here have to do with farming and thieving. The thieving aspect is simpler, so let's go over that first. There are new druids that you can pickpocket at level 42 thieving and Crux Ekal equal Ekal Crux Ekal knights that require level 83 thieving to pickpocket. From my experience so far, it seems like for the most part they reward you with coins and, as Jajex puts it, competitive experience rates. Uh, but sometimes they'll reward you with these anima stones that are used for runecrafting. Elemental anima stones can be carried while runecrafting to increase the yield of one rune essence by two, and these are stackable. So one of these anima stones is consumed per rune essence crafted to give you an increased yield. Elemental stones only work for the four basic elemental runes, but you can also uncommonly pickpocket a catalytic anima stone, which has the same effect for the other rune types. These are tradable, and Jagex has stated that these stones will be added to other drop tables in the future, but for now, um, it looks like pickpocketing these new druids is the only way to get them. I have no idea what prices are going to look like in the future for these, but it should be interesting to see. Also, you may pickpocket sand seeds every now and then, which um, it's a consumable that teleports you to the Karid Garden. These do not appear to be tradable, but they are also purchasable from the druid reward shop for 500 points. One thing that shocked me about all this, uh, the thieving aspect at least, is the failure rate in pickpocketing the Crux Ikal Knights. Uh, you might notice that I have level 99 thieving with the Master Camouflage outfit, as well as the Crystal Mask spell. At other high level pickpocketing targets, like Elves, this is enough to keep you pickpocketing for 5 minutes straight, uninterrupted. These Knights, on the other hand, catch you very often, even with this setup. I have noticed that the Lightform Prayer does help by giving Crystal Mask quite a boost, and I really wouldn't recommend pickpocketing these knights without that, if at all possible. You might also notice that each successful pickpocket of a knight is giving me around 400 experience, which is substantially higher than other pickpocketing targets. The lower level druids, on the other hand, seem much easier to pickpocket, and I don't um, get caught very much or at all yet by them. I can't speak for lower thieving levels, but I imagine this is still a much better training method and definitely less irritating and more rewarding than the other low to mid level thieving methods, uh, such as the cell doors and the thieving guild that are pretty irritating. The last important thing to mention about thieving in this update is that pickpocketing across the entire game got a major change. Uh, all pickpocketing targets across RuneScape will now be auto continuously pickpocketed until you're caught so you no longer have to click every time you pickpocket any NPC. Because of this, the Sticky Fingers Archaeology Relic in its prior state is rendered totally useless, so instead of granting this continuous pickpocketing effect, it now just increases the rate at which you pickpocket by 50%. This makes it much more useful in my opinion if you're heavily training thieving, as that is a considerable boost to experience rates and profit. Alright, now let's talk Herblorn farming because the overhaul around this is much more impactful for most players. The part that most players will notice first is that, according to Jagex, all bosses have had their herb drops replaced completely with herb seed drops. Additionally, Abyssal Lords, Vire Lords, and Lost Grove creatures specifically have had their herb drops reduced. And as a separate point to that, all other Slayer creatures still drop herbs, but also at a reduced rate. I'm not sure what the distinction there is really between those two 
points. This goes hand in hand with another part of this up update, which is the perks you can now purchase with the new Crux Acal Favor points. These change the way that you plant and harvest herbs. With these perks, you're now able to plant multiple herb seeds in the same patch after you unlock them, with diminishing rewards of herb harvest according to how many seeds you planted. Um, an easier way to understand this, I think, is that what it really means is that the lives your herb plants have is increased. If you don't know already, with farming in general, every crop that you pick has a certain number of lives, and every time you pick something, there's a chance that one of the lives will be used up. Um, and then when all the lives are used up, the plant uh, fin finishes harvesting. So this is why you see a bit of RNG and a wide array of uh, harvest quantities, depending on your harvest with farming. And of course, things like super compost and ultra compost increase the lives of your plants. But anyways, that's how this works. Uh, planting multiple seeds in the same patch just increases the amount of lives that that plant has. Overall, this does result in less herbs per seed, the more seeds that you add in, but it still adds up to a lot of herbs per harvest, more than before per harvest per patch, if that makes sense. As a loose reference, I am seeing between 20 and 25 herbs with the tier 3 upgrade, um, which means that I'm planting 4 seeds at a time. So 20 to 25 herbs per 4 seeds is what I'm seeing. I have seen forum posts of some players saying that they're receiving less herbs than even with one seed before, uh, like pre-update after purchasing these upgrades. I haven't experienced that, um, but still it might be like a rare bug or something to be on the lookout for. I noticed something very handy about the druid at the new herb patch in the garden, which is a right click option to note the gathered produce that you have. This helps a lot in speed farming the favor points, pun totally intended which I'll go over in a minute, and I noticed that leprechauns at other patches do have this option now. Honestly, I have no idea if this was already an existing feature, but it makes this druid herb patch handy for growth potion farming. It also helps a lot because there actually isn't a bank in this garden area. There's also been a change to diseased farming patches across the board. Diseased patches will no longer die, they'll just stay diseased until you cure them. Also, I didn't even know this from before this update, but if you have a farming catalyst fragment equipped uh, that you get from Sliski's endgame, you will still get shadow-infused herbs from diseased patches like before. Uh, before this update, apparently, the herb patch would just get plucked and you would get these shadow herbs, or shadow-infused herbs, which are cleaned and consumed for a lot of herbal experience. Uh, now, the herb patch will be cured if you're wearing the fragment, and you'll still get shadow-infused herbs anyways. There's a new activity as well involving herb growing, which gets you points for the druid reward shop. If you have beans saved up from the player-owned farm, now's the time to dump them into leafy growth potions. The idea seems to be that every day, the druid here will have a daily herb that needs growing. You plant an herb as usual in any patch in anywhere in the game world. Grow the herb, harvest the herb, and ta-da, you get druid points. The rate of point collection seems pretty slow, to be honest, at the moment, but the reward shop does have some enticing perks and rewards. Uh, one that stands out to me is farming outfit pieces at 10k a pop. This does seem a little bit nicer, uh, as a nicer way to get those than that very irritating cabbage game, unless you particularly like that game. Um, it does look like you get points for planting herbs at any patch from my experience, so I'm pretty sure you should talk to them first before you start gathering points, but uh, yeah, you will throughout your usual herb runs anyways. I notice that the reward shop points per harvest is pretty set, but jumps up quite a lot the more seeds you plant at once in the patch. Um, for example, I was seeing 50 points per seed per harvest at first, uh, regardless of how many herbs you pick. Um, the way it basically works is that if you plant and harvest the daily herb, it's 50 points per seed. And every herb has a set value, uh, increasing in value the more high level the herb is. But you'll get the most rewards at 50 points per seed if you plant the daily herb. And this scales evenly per seed, so when you purchase the upgrade and start planting two seeds at a time in a patch, you'll get 100 points. I have now gotten as far as the tier 3 upgrade, which means I'm planting or able to plant four seeds in a patch, and that gives me 200 points per patch. As a quick reference to how your favorite point grind might look, since you get 50 points per seed for the herb of the day, if you have the top tier of Power Planter unlocked and use 10 seeds at a time, you'll get 500 points per herb patch. This is more tedious and repetitive a task, to be honest, than I like to see Jagex give us nowadays in these kind of updates, but it translates to roughly 20 seeds per farming outfit piece, or like 20 seeds per 10k points. 
If you stock up on some seeds and leafy growth potions, it could take you around one minute per full harvest since you'll get a ton of herbs, um, unless your master farming outfit perks uh, and gathers a bunch of everything at once, or you purchase some of those harvest bombs to make this go faster. I'm not sure if that's worth it point-wise. There are a number of other minor changes, including changes to compost bins and nightshade plants, but I'm not going to go over those too much. I'd rather just tell you my thoughts on all these updates, because one thing I know for sure is that not all players are happy about them, particularly the herb drop overhaul. So what is the point of drastically reducing herb drops and drastically increasing yield from herb plants per harvest? Just... Just the increased yield of herb patches at the cost of more herb seeds, I could see being a great standalone update. I have zero interest in herb runs as it is, even as an iron account now, but it definitely helps if I can get much greater yields per run every now and then, instead of running around the world's herb patches for only a handful of herbs per patch. Uh, so in my mind, that's not a bad feature update, even if you get less herbs per seed. But reducing the global herb drops from monsters and bosses as well changes the whole dynamic of herb lore much further. The end result of this, and presumably the intended goal from Jagex, is that we'll have less stray herbs floating around the player market, um, probably, possibly, and increase the value of herbs, and many more players may be making farming runs for their aggression potions and overload ingredients. I'm curious to see how this shift plays out. Um, Will players suddenly have a shortage of overloads and need to make more farming runs because of an herb famine in the Grand Exchange? I honestly don't believe so. Are there so many extra herbs in circulation now that we will be fine anyways with the amount of herb drops that players will still get from Slayer, even with the reduced drop rate? I do believe so. I'll be curious to see if this update increases the price and decreases the availability of herbs in the Grand Exchange because... Uh, that could affect players who are grinding to level 120 herb lore or 200 million experience. And honestly, I think that crowd could make up the vast majority of people who are complaining about this update. But for more casual PVMers and Slayers, I think the complaining players are blowing this impact out of proportion. I believe the main intended benefit of this update is for the herb runs. Even if you use 10 times the amount of seeds for half the usual harvest or so of those seeds, this is still going to save you a ton of time running all over the world's herb patches for puny harvests like before. Besides, honestly speaking, is anyone going to tell me that throughout a normal day's bossing and slaying that you weren't already getting away more herb seed drops than you could possibly plant? As for thieving, it seems from my experience that so far the new pickpocketing targets could be decent for training the skill situationally. I think that the overall loot uh, from pickpocketing elves at higher thieving levels is much more rewarding, and an absolute walk in the park with Crystal Mask. Of course, we also have the highly competitive safe cracking that nothing in this update likely tops. Uh, mostly, I do appreciate the level 42 druids as a nice bridge for that painful midway gap in thieving before you can start cracking safes for way easy scape experience. Regarding the druid pickpocketing rewards, I see them for the most part as a nice side gift to irons and players who craft their own runes. I don't believe they are experience multipliers, just rune quantity multipliers, or anything like that. Um, and I don't believe they'll help rune crafters who make money off the skill, because I imagine the price per elemental stone will quickly jump to around the price of uh, two water runes. And I think the price of catalytic stones will jump to the price of two blood or soul runes, whichever one's more expensive nowadays, I have no idea, honestly. The demand for these things on the exchange will definitely be thousandfold higher than the rate that players are going to be pickpocketing them at, so I imagine they'll be quite expensive. Personally, I'm really not bothered by any part of this update. As it is, I stopped training Herblore by making potions because um, as you get to mid or high levels, Aya is a way more chill training method that I much prefer, and that is the dream of Aya, um, even if it's slower. Uh, really, whenever I need more supersets or whatever, I just pickpocket elves, and when I need extremes, I just have fun actually bossing and gathering elder troves. So, well, to be perfectly clear, I'm also not one of those players that is rushing to 120 herb lore or 200 million experience, so... I am perfectly happy to take it nice and slow with Herblor. Uh, my suggestion, if you're bummed about the decrease in herbs and have to farm more, well, you already have daily or weekly farming runs at your player farm anyway, right? If you don't, I would say that your whole runescape experience is horribly wrong, but 
Anyways, my point is that if you pass by your Ardange farm anyways to check animals, just dump some seeds in the herb patch as you go and harvest your next time around. I am also personally not a fan of making herb runs all day long as part of my runescape experience. On this iron account even, I check my bloodweed patch maybe weekly or less, and I just don't use aggression potions that much. I am more than happy to unlock the perks to dump a ton of those seeds at once, which stockpile from Slayer anyways much faster than I can go through, even if it is for smaller yield than I would have had for those individual seeds. So that about covers it, I think. If you enjoyed this guide, please consider liking and subscribing, and please leave us your thoughts in the comments below. Um, do you love this update? Do you hate it? If you hate it, can you confirm that you are one of the players super speed leveling to 120 or 200 million? <laughs> please let us know and why, and let's have a talk about it. If you need a guide for the Civil War Part 3 mini quest, stick around. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.